Hello and welcome for you. Uh, we're going to talk today about factoring cubic expressions, specifically sum and difference of cubes, uh, and we're going to figure out some patterns so that we don't have to use the factor theorem. Now we're going to start in the first place by using factor theorem, uh, but before we talk about sum and difference of cubes, I want to refresh your memory about a difference of squares. Remember what a difference of squares looks like? Something like this, 4x squared minus 25. That's a difference of squares, and it's a difference of squares because the middle sign in between my two terms is a difference. It's a subtraction, and the two things that are being subtracted are both perfect squares. This first one here, this 4x squared, um, it is 2x all squared, and 25 is 5 all squared. So they're both perfect squares because they come from these nice numbers that are squared. Now, when I factor a difference of squares, um, we know that the middle term cancelled out in the expansion, so the middle terms must have been exactly the same with different signs. So the way we get the two middle terms to be exactly the same is if we have exactly the same brackets. So this is 2x and 2x out front, which gives us this 4x squared, and this is 5 and 5 in the back, which gives us the 25. And the two middle terms, if I expand it um, using FOIL or just expansion purposes, this is 10x and this is 10x. And in order to make them go away, because there's obviously no x term here, um, and to make those go away, one has to be plus and one has to be minus. So I have to have one bracket with a plus and one bracket with a minus. And that was how we factored differences of squares. So um, let's try another sort of difference of squares. Here's another difference of squares. 100x squared minus uh, 9. Well, I know that 100x squared is 10x all squared, and I know that 9 is 3 squared, so I need two brackets, and I'm going to have the 10x's at the front to give me that 100x squared, and I'm going to have 3's at the back, and to get the middle term to disappear completely, I need a plus in one and a minus in the other. Now, differences of squares were very, very easy to factor if you remembered, if you can recognize them. Now, you didn't have to write any of that down, uh, but I want to uh, add one more little thing. Sum of squares was not factorable because there was no way I could get the middle two terms to cancel if I had a plus there because they have to have the same signs and same signs combine. So sum of, sum of squares was not factorable. That's not the case for the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. So we're going to take a look at sum and difference of cubes and we're going to start by using the factor theorem. Uh, and this says use factor theorem to factor this thing. So I have to figure out something that makes this zero by the factor theorem. Uh, and I know by using my integral uh, zero theorem that it has to be a factor of eight. So I have plus or minus one or plus or minus eight and then plus or minus two or plus or minus four. Those are the only things that could possibly make this zero. And it doesn't take much to have a quick look at it to know that my x cubed is going to have to equal negative 8 in order to make this thing go to zero, which means that x is going to have to equal negative 2. Oh, that should have said negative 8 there. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to copy that down anyway. Um, what this just means is that I can look at it and know that p at negative 2 is going to equal 0 because negative 2 cubed is negative 8 and then plus 8 is 0. So that means that x min er, plus 2 is a factor. So using uh, synthetic division, I've got negative 2 out front here and I need coefficient of the cube term is 1 then there's no squared term and no x term and then 8 is our constant term. So quick do, do of synthetic division, you need a 0 here, uh, add down, negative 2, add down, um, positive 4, add down, negative 8, add down, remainder 0. So our actual, this um, factors to uh, x plus 2 times uh, x squared 
minus 2x plus 4. Now this thing is not going to factor anymore. Uh, sometimes it, you may find that the once you've taken out the linear factor that the quadratic factor um, factors further but for some indifference of cubes that is not the case. So now we're going to take a look at uh, difference of cubes. Okay, This one up here was a sum, this one down here is a difference. We're going to take a look at the difference of cubes with factor theorem as well uh, and this time um, we need x to be 2 to make this go to 0. This one's an easy case of finding what makes it 0. So p at 2 has to equal 0, uh, which means that x minus 2 is a factor. And then we're going to use synthetic division to uh, divide this out. Ta-da! Through the magic of the pop, pause button, there it all is. Um, so we're going to take a look and see if we can find some, some um, patterns here that will help us when doing this with other things. So here's the patterns I want to point out. First of all, when our question is a sum, our linear factor is a sum. And when our question is a difference, our linear factor is a difference. And the way we got these numbers here, this 2, and the x are both cube roots of these things. Okay, so that's where the linear factor came from. If we're looking at going to the quadratic factor, okay, and that didn't matter whether it was a sum or a difference, if we're looking to go to the quadratic factor, this x squared comes from squaring this x. And this is just a pattern, mind you. This isn't exactly where it came from. It came from the synthetic division, but we can see the pattern that I have x and I can get x squared, and here I have x and I can get x squared. And then this negative 2 squared gives me positive 4, and this, ne this positive 2 squared gives me positive 4. So these are squared. And then let's take a different, we'll take this nice light blue. And this term in the middle comes from this product in here. We're going to multiply those two things together and I get 2x. So it's a product, um, but it has the opposite sign. So we'll just do that in general and I've got a correction to make on here. These two signs are switched. So let's change this into a plus. Changing this one into a minus is a bit more difficult. We'll change that into a minus. Okay. Uh, and so the pattern is the linear factor, you just strip off the cubes. Strip off uh, cubes. And then you use your linear factor to get your quadratic factor. That and that come from squaring. And then if I take the product here, I get over here, this is, I multiply those two things together and then I take the opposite sign. And that works whether it's a sum or a difference. You'll see that it's exactly the same pattern down here. I strip off the cubes here because this was a plus and now it's still a plus. Um, these things came from squaring those two. The first one came from squaring the first. The last one here came from squaring the last. And the middle one is the product of the two. So now we're going to use those patterns to actually factor this. So the first thing that we want to know here is what's the cube root of each of these terms. Well the cube root of 8t cubed uh, 8t cubed comes from 2t all cubed and 64 is 4 cubed. So my linear factor I just strip off the cubes once I know what the cube root is and I get 2t minus 4. Now I'm going to get the quadratic factor by looking at the linear factor. I'm going to square the first and get 4t squared and I'm going to square the last and get plus 16. The middle one comes from multiplying these together. Uh, when I multiply those together, I get negative 8t, and then I have to change the sign. So it's going to be positive 8t. Okay. 
Now don't confuse this process. It's very similar to expanding a perfect square, uh, but it's not exactly the same. So don't, try, don't confuse those two processes. Um, this one here, we're going to strip off the cubes. So that's pretty easy here. This one here is actually 3z all cubed, and this is y cubed. So when I strip off the cubes, I'm going to get y plus 3z. And then the quadratic factor I'm going to get from looking at the linear factor. So I need a y squared and a 9z squared. If I just square this term, square that term. And I'm going to multiply the two together. So I get 3yz, but I need the opposite sign. So minus 3yz. And this last one here. If I strip off the cubes here, um, 125 is actually 5 cubed, and 64x cubed, 64 is 4 cubed, so this is going to be 4x all cubed. And now to get the linear factor, I just strip off the cubes, so I have 5 plus 4x. In the quadratic factor, I go by the pattern, square the first term, and I get the first term. Square the last term of the linear factor, and I get the last term of the quadratic factor. Uh, the middle term comes from the product here, which is going to be 20x, but I need the opposite sign. So 20x, and of course I need the plus in there. So it's as straightforward as that. Now, factoring by grouping. You may be able to group terms with common factors to find a binomial factor. So um, we did factoring by grouping back in grade 10, but you may not remember it. And I don't know that you would have done a whole lot of factoring by grouping last year. So what we have to do is group terms that have common factors. So I'm going to group these because they have a common factor of x squared. And I'm going to group these two terms because they have a common factor of 9 in them. But when I write them down, here's what I'm going to do. Write them down grouped. I'm going to write down uh, x cubed plus 2x squared. And then I'm going to write down the other two, negative 9x minus 18, and always put a plus in between them. Now I'm going to take out the common factor from each bracket. So I'm going to remove an x squared from here. And when I remove x squared, I'm left with x plus 2. And over here, they have a common factor of 9. So I'm going to remove 9. So plus 9 gives me x negative x minus 2. Now notice that these two things aren't the same. What I really want to want is for these two brackets to be exactly the same because then I can remove the bracket as a linear factor. Um, but they're not exactly the same. Although they're really really close. If I had decided instead of taking out a positive 9, if I decided to take out a negative 9 here, then this would have been a positive x and a positive 2, and now these two factors are exactly the same. So since they're the same, I can remove them, and I take out the x uh, plus 2, and if I divide this term by x plus 2, that bracket cancels with that one, and so I'm just left with the x squared. And if I divide this one by x plus 2, this cancels with the bracket, and I'm left with minus 9. So that gives me uh, x plus 2 and x squared minus 9. Now hopefully you recognize x squared minus 9 as being a difference of squares. And so I can change that x squared minus 9 to x plus 3, x minus 3. So that's a recap of factoring by grouping. Um, and that brings us to the end of this lesson.